So today we're going to talk about three tips for putting your content calendar online. Use one calendar for everything. All too often, I'll work with an organization that will have one document that has their fundraising events and then an Excel spreadsheet for ads and PR. Uh, and what I usually recommend is use one calendar for everything. I often recommend Google Calendar for organizations that are just starting out. Google Calendar is very, very flexible, great for organizations that are just starting out and developing their process. And of course, there are other tools that you can look at as well. So what should you include in your calendar? External events that are important to the community. So for example, holidays, uh, milestones, commemorative events. Uh, so for example, October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. That's a big deal for breast cancer organizations. Uh, internal events. So internal events would be volunteer recognition events, galas, walkathons, fundraisers, and so forth. Promotions, any sort of promotion that you're doing. Ads, both online and offline. Direct mail. When are people receiving direct mail piece, right? They might receive email as well. Probably there's a huge overlap. The second uh, tip is to decide who needs access to the calendar. Uh, and there's two different types of access. There's editing, so some people will be editing the calendar, and other people will just want to view the calendar, right? So for example, an executive director, you may want to have that person just view the calendar so that they can have that bird's eye view, whereas a manager level or maybe a, a communications director, they might want to have access to edit some of the um, topics and some of the uh, items that are in the content calendar, right? So who needs access? The actual people. Who are you going to give access to? Along with this, I'm going to add <clears throat> have a regular meeting, you know, once a week if you can, a beginning of the week to sit down and go through the calendar and talk with people. What are the goals for this week? What are we trying to achieve? Is there anything we need to talk about? Are there any conflicts? Does anybody have any great ideas to help our content or to communicate with our supporters, right? So have that weekly meeting. I would recommend weekly, actually. It doesn't have to be a really long meeting, but once you have this calendar, uh, you have one place that documents everything and you can unify with all the other folks in the organization, okay? So the third uh, tip is to plan repurposing into your editorial calendar, okay? And so what is content repurposing? Many of you probably already know this, but uh, basically it's taking an existing or planned piece of content and adapting it for various platforms and formats like email, Twitter, and so forth, all right? So the reason why this is really important is because you have limited time, okay? You have limited time, and it also helps you focus on the story rather than the content itself, and I'll get to that in just a second. But let me show you just a couple of examples here. So one example is you spend a lot of time writing a blog post, right? So that blog post takes a lot of sweat and thought and consideration and also research that you're putting into that blog post. So a lot of that material can be used for Twitter, uh, pictures, you can post on Pinterest or Instagram, Facebook updates, you're gonna basically pull all of that content out of that blog post, and also for the email newsletter, right? Another one is video. So if you spend the time and the resources to create video, uh, you can take the video and transcribe it, have the audio transcribed and produce a couple of blog posts or a few Facebook updates or your email newsletter. The benefit is really, again, you have limited time. You have to worry about appealing to different audiences and you will create a me message consistency, message consistency across all the platforms. Right. So how does this work in practice? So for planning repurposing in your editorial calendar, start with the story. You don't want to start with the content itself. You want to start with the story or the idea. You want to start 30 days in advance with the key story that really is going to propel people and get them to take the action that you want them to take. Okay. You develop your story outline, right? So what's the outline of the story, the important elements of that story? 
and decide the best format for that story. So it might be a video. If your audience is into video and you're used to creating video, then great. Video is going to be the best format for that story. Or blog post. Blog post is another one. Uh, sorry about the radiator in the background. I don't know if you can hear that, but it's this kind of high-pitched radiator sound. That's, that's you know, anyhow, it's a radiator. Um, and then uh, start with the piece of content that requires the most resources, right? So typically that's going to be a video or a blog post or a newsletter. So we start with that. And then as we're writing it and as we're researching it, we're collecting all the various different um, snippets of content for other platforms like Facebook, Twitter, and so forth. And this way, um, by the time you're done with the blog post, you've already got, you've already have, you know, 10 or 12 tweets and maybe three or four different Facebook updates that are ready to go right when you hit publish in uh, for your blog post, right? So then you can simply repurpose a lot of the content that's actually inside the blog post, leading people once they you know, they see that on Twitter, they click on the link, of course, they go back to the blog post. That's going to drive a lot more traffic. Okay. And then the last piece here is the uh, a free template that I have for you guys. You, you could actually just click on the link here in the slide. So once you download the slides, there's going to be a link right here. And basically, it's a, it's a Google document. And you can download this to your desktop and then upload it or simply copy it over to your own Google document account. And then uh, it had the format is fairly straightforward. A lot of my clients are using this and they love it. Absolutely love it. Uh, but basically <clears throat> the the format is there's months. So January, February, March, I've started you off with. And you could simply copy the worksheets and then you'll have obviously April through December. So this is all of 2016. And for each month, you're going to focus on important questions who what are you trying to achieve what's the big deal in this month what's the big event what's our goal who are you engaging with this month board members previous participants uh, segments affiliates these are just examples here and then how will you track success now as we go over to the right we can see that each um, channel if you like is is covered so there's email social media direct mail e uh, your website, blog posts, PR, and so forth. So you have to scroll over to the right in the spreadsheet, and you'll see all of these different channels. And then we have the content itself, or maybe notes about the content, the owner who's who's responsible for that piece of content, the status, is it done, is it in progress, and what's the publication date. Now, once you have all this information in here, of course, you can um, manage it a lot uh, more easily. Right. So many people will have access to it and you can meet regularly and update this and make sure everybody's on track. But the point of the this template is actually to make sure that your all your content throughout the month, throughout each month, is actually focusing on your objectives and the audience that you're trying to reach with your content. OK, so that is the last point here. 